put this one through. Ah. Are we live? Can anyone? No, I can't. Message me, tell me we're live. Bye. Mess this up. Exciting. He's going to join us. <laughs> 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 Hi from the Wells family. Say hello, Lucy. From the Dolphins. Excellent, excellent. No, I'm muted on that. That's good too. <laughs> and it's like, there's no sound, there's no sound. No, it's because, because you've muted me on that laptop so that I can work on this laptop. Come and say hello. Too much. Uh, good evening. I want technical support this evening. Good morning and welcome to St Werberg's Online. We're so glad that you're joining us for church this morning and a particularly warm welcome if you're new, if this is your first time with us. My name is Jenny and I'm a curate at the church. And do say hello to us today in the chat function. We love to see who's watching us and joining us each Sunday. We've got a great service lined up this morning. Phil Mann, our lead minister, is going to be launching a new sermon series. Um, Amy, our children's pastor, in a moment, she will do a slot for the children. And also we're going to have some sung worship. And the great thing is, if you're watching this at home, then you're able to sing along if you want to. There's no restrictions at singing in your own homes. But my prayer and our hope for all of us this morning as we join together online is that we'll experience the love of God, that we will be able to enter into his presence, to not be distracted by everything going on around us. And so that is my prayer for you this morning. But shall we pray as we start this service? Father God, I wanna thank you again for your love. I wanna thank you for your presence, that you can meet with us in each of our homes across Derby and further afield. And I pray this morning, Will you help us not to be distracted by everything going on around us? But will you help us to fix our eyes on you and just to truly enter into your presence? In Jesus' name. Amen. Over to you, Amy. Good morning, church. It is so good to be with you again this morning. This week, we are starting a new series about following the ways of Jesus and how we can be more and more and more like him each and every day. Now, somebody who follows Jesus is called a disciple. You'll recognize 
this word as Jesus had 12 friends who were called his disciples. But the big question is, do you know what the word disciple even means? I'll tell you. A disciple is like a pupil or a student, somebody who learns from their teacher or leader. When you decide to follow Jesus, you become one of his disciples. You are to follow in his ways. And you can do this by spending time with Jesus. You can do it by reading your Bible and learning all about him. Today, we're looking at a passage where Jesus tells us that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Have you ever heard this phrase before? Well, let's take a look at it together now. Jesus said, don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and in me. In my Father's house, there are many rooms and I'll prepare a room for you. But how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. How great is that passage? Now, in our session this week, which you can find on our website, which is stwdarby.org forward slash kids. In our session, I've asked you a number of questions, but the one that I would like to ask you now is whilst you were listening to that passage, what stood out to you the most? For me, it's the fact that Jesus tells us that he is the way to God, the only way to the Father. So by being in a relationship with Jesus, we have access to the Father. I want you to close your eyes and to think of a journey that you've been on recently. Maybe you visited a friend. Maybe you went to the Peak District and you had an adventure in the countryside. Or maybe you were in the car with your family traveling somewhere. Have you thought of your journey yet? Once you have your journey in mind, I want you to see if you can remember, did you see any signs whilst you were on your journey? Well, hopefully you did, and hopefully you will know that these signs are really important and they often give us important information when we are on a journey. So next time that you are in the car, have a little look outside the window and see if you can see any signs and see if you can work out what they mean. Signs are super important and they help protect us. They help take us the right way. And if we don't follow signs, we sometimes get lost or we end up in trouble, or sometimes we could even end up having an accident because we didn't follow the rules that were given to us. We need to obey what signs say. In the same way, we need to obey Jesus when he tells us which way we should go. But Jesus didn't just point out a good way to go. He is the way himself. Jesus also told us that he was the truth. And that means that you can trust him 
you can trust in the way that he is showing you to go. Because Jesus is the truth, he won't ever mislead us or let us down or send us in the wrong way. The last part of the phrase that we heard earlier, that Jesus was the way, the truth, is the life. Jesus told us that he is the life as well. He wants us to have our best life. And that's why he wants to show us the way to go. If we follow Jesus and in his ways, then we can have our best life. Now this doesn't mean that life is gonna be easy because life can be difficult sometimes. But if we have Jesus showing us the way, then we can have the best life. In the Bible, Jesus tells us that he wants us to have life in all its fullness, at its absolute best. So why not trust him and listen to what he has to say? Let's pray together now. Dear Father God, we want to thank you that you sent Jesus to be the way back to you. We want to thank you that we can have a relationship with you because of him. We are sorry, God, for when we don't follow your way, for when we want to do our own thing. We are sorry for when we have turned our back on you and have gone a different way that we shouldn't have gone. Please help us this week to obey you and to listen to what you call us to. Help us to have the best week by following in your ways. Amen. It's been so good to see you once again. Look forward to seeing you next week. Bye!
Pray. 
mercy is the king the power and glory now and forever Father, thank you so much that we can meet here today. I pray that you would bless everybody at home who's listening and everybody in the congregation here at Words today. Uh, I pray that you'd fill us with your spirit as we worship. I pray that you'd talk to us and I pray that you'd help us to be enthused to go and tell other people about you as well, Lord. Lord, please may give all the people that are going back to school, uni or work your joy and your comfort. May they not be anxious about going back and may you help them to adjust to the new circumstances really easily. And I also pray for the government, Lord. I pray that you would bless Boris Johnson and all of his support team. I pray that you'd bless everybody else who's in charge because they need your wisdom, Lord, um, and they need your love and your courage and your strength so that you can help them to help us uh, to deliver us from this pandemic, Lord. Amen. Amen. things new 
right here, right now, I lift up my praise. I will dance in the land of the living. I will shout. I'll never stop singing. You are good. Your love endures forever. I will dance in the land of the living. I will shout. I'll never stop singing. You are good. Your love. I'll take the disappointments and turn them into praise. I know Jesus, you are with me. Good morning, Helen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning and being willing to share with us and talk to me. Um, today about life and faith and all of that. Um, it's so good to have you with us. Oh, you're very welcome. And uh, I understand we got volunteered in our absence. But yes, <laughs> I know. But That's what happens when you don't turn up for a meeting. Suddenly you've got That's these things it, to yeah. do. So we're very mm. grateful. Thank you. Could you just welcome, maybe start by telling us a little bit about yourself and um, family and work and how you came to be at Werbs, maybe um, for those sure. who don't know you? Yeah, so, um, so yes, I'm married. So I've been married for 32 years to the wonderful George. Um, we live five miles out of Derby and we've sort of lived in this area uh, ever since we got married. Mm -hmm. uh, we have three uh, wonderful grown-up sons who all have partners um, scattered around the world. So we have uh, Max and Jessica they're in the middle of nowhere in Canada um, actually live in a yurt that they built oh my goodness <laughs> no yet but uh, thinking of it um, Harry and Wen have our first lovely grandson who's wow. uh, old and they live in Taiwan wow. and uh, recently we've been uh, very blessed because Jim and his wife Jasmine um, they did in Oxford um, but the weekend before lockdown, they came here for the weekend and um, ended up staying. So uh, some people know that um, Jim has just joined the team. At, um, so I see God's hand on that one. Yes, so do we. We're very great. Yeah, really great. Um, so I've only been at St. Worth's for a little while, actually. Mm -hmm. I joined uh, just over a year ago, uh, September 2019. Um, before that, I've always worshipped where we've lived. So mm -hmm. I've been to local churches, um, either Church of England or a, a more recently a sort of house church. Um, but my heart actually has really always been for the city. Mm -hmm. So a business um, just outside uh, the city, uh, which I co-own with a uh, fellow Christian, which is great. Um, so we, we make things for hospitals and dentistry. Um, and then I've been, currently I'm on the board of the YMCA, just up the road from the factory where we are. And prior to that, I worked for, or supported Safe and Sound, which is a reasonably mm -hmm. well-known charity, um, very much involved, Sheila Tully, very much involved with um, preventing sexual exploitation of children. So it's always been a bit of a heart for the city and what goes on in cities. Um, and now I'm due to retire next year. Mm -hmm. I went but okay um what does this look like um where do i want to serve for what is the sort of last part of my life 
I actually went through a rather bizarre exercise of going, okay, who would I like to take my funeral and what are they going to say about me? <laughs> um, prompted by one of those things where, wasn't it the um, Nobel Prize winner or something? One yes, of the Nobel yes. Prize winners. Yeah, yeah. They yeah, accidentally yeah. printed his obituary and he yes. didn't like the look of yeah, it. Yeah. So, um, no, not, that, not that I hopefully don't feel quite that way about my life so <laughs> far, but um, on the other hand, um, retirement, uh, I think, gives you opportunity. And uh, anyway, because a long story short, I, I ended up at St. Words and definitely not regretted it. I'm loving oh. it. Well, we're very grateful to have you. It's been, um, yeah, Helen has been a faithful prayer throughout all of this season and before. And so I'm very grateful that you have joined early morning prayer and Sunday morning prayer and alpha prayer and all sorts so it's been great to have your support and have you with us in many different ways um, so we're particularly start well we're starting a new se series um today and we're particularly thinking about the way of jesus and discipleship and how we kind of deepen our discipleship in this season particularly when the things around us that normally would have supported us or helped us we can't fully do um, so I wondered whether during lockdown, how have you managed to maintain your faith, um, grow your kind of discipleship and stay connected in this strange time? Sure. So um, I've definitely needed help with that. Yes. Um, I had a bit of a spiritual direction moment for mm. about a year and a half. And uh, this lovely spiritual director of mine pointed out that I seem to read more books about how to pray than actually do it. So there is a bit of a story behind me suddenly turning up at early morning prayer and um, various other prayer meetings and home groups because um, I've discovered about myself. I'm not actually very good on my own if mm. I'm sitting I have a bit of a tendency to be really distracted or mm -hmm. goes off in the kitchen or you know th there's any number of diversionary things that go on in my head so I've tried a few different things um, but what I found is um, Lectio 365 yeah. I use that, uh, brilliant mm -hmm. that gives me a bit of quiet time makes me sit still and listen and and do some prayer and kind of times the amount of prayer I'm doing because otherwise I sit there do I set an alarm do I set a you know how do I do this which yeah. um you know it's just I, I don't suppose I'm the only person that finds no, it like at all. um the other thing um not ever so good at reading my bible so um I have got the bible in a year app mm -hmm. and again I walk when I do that because otherwise I find again I could be a bit distracted um Probably a bit bizarre because on a rainy day I'll be found marching around our house, <laughs> listening yeah. to David Suchet uh, reading oh. me the Bible, uh, and then listening to Nikki and Pippa Gumble mm -hmm. telling me about. It. So, um, so those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. um, because I have actually been, um, I'm one of those people that needs to isolate. Mm -hmm. So I've actually had since March the seventh. Um, so uh, mm -hmm. I really miss uh, shaking hands, hugging people. Yeah. Yeah. stuff um i think it'd be quite easy to disconnect mm, yeah so um i've gone for connection so yeah early morning I and things like that and it's been great it, it's, it's um i think and uh cheerful i mm. think in yeah. the process yeah it's been good it has to be a choice doesn't it um sometimes and we have to it's you're so wise to you know when you realize something about yourself and how you do or don't connect and what you do or don't need to put those things into place even though it might feel a little forced at times or a, yeah a bit unusual actually that routine and rhythm mm. building that in is so important yeah. so do you feel i have to be a bit sorry i was going to say i have no. to be a bit careful because i have a bit of a tendency to have a list a, a, you know list of yeah. jobs to do in the day and again, my spiritual director said, don't you dare go prayer, tick. tick. <laughs> <laughs> Bible reading, tick. You know, I know, but it's awesome. so tempting to feel, oh, yeah. I've done that. But yeah, yeah. it, it works a little bit differently. So do you think yeah. there's anything you've learned alongside that um, or seen any change or in any way deepened your faith over this season? That might encourage well, us. Well, I think, yeah, I have you guys to thank for that, I think, because I've 
I've um, really, really, really valued um, reading The Ruthless Elimination of mm -hmm. Hurry. Um, we should have read it years ago, <laughs> really years ago, and, and would have been transformed. So if you haven't read it yet, I would recommend it. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't quite been brave enough to turn my phone off and my emails for an entire 24-hour period yet, <laughs> but um, it's, it's there, you know, in, in a compartment. Journey. A little gremlin on my shoulder saying wouldn't that be good um but no the uh i think i think it was on the simplicity route already um in lots of ways um not having so much stuff mm -hmm. has been on for quite a long time um so yeah I, i'm 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 immersed in that already but sabbath I definitely was not um honoring mm -hmm. an entire or using that um, in the way that John Mark Comer recommends. Mm -hmm. um, I have started, you know, my husband can't believe it, I'm sitting still on a Sunday. <laughs> it's quite what is that? Yeah. But it is, and, and as he quite rightly says, that whole day, uh, I think, has the capacity to affect the other six. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, that's a and, good encouragement to read it. Um, if you haven't, it is... It is so yes yeah. i watched the shopping habits yes yeah because <laughs> I mean, yeah. being at home it's definitely been a bit sort of uh oh what can i buy from amazon yeah oh. yes yeah yes. it's a challenge on ev lots of different areas but the sabbath thing is very powerful and <clears throat> yeah that command you're just reminding you of what it says and it's an actual command to do this for our good so yeah is, um, and then putting these things into place and into practice is is key. Yeah. That's really helpful. Thank you, Helen. I think so You're many welcome. people will be in a similar situation to you. So thank you so much yes. for sharing that with us. And um, you're welcome. Uh, it's been lovely to chat. Thank you. Thanks. So this is the moment in our service where we just want to keep you updated about a few different things going on at St Werberg's. And this morning I'm going to highlight two things in particular. So this week we started our Alpha course. Thank you so much for those of you who came along. It was a lot of fun. And what we do on an Alpha evening is we meet together on Zoom on a Monday night at eight o'clock. And then we watch a talk online and afterwards break into smaller groups where we can discuss what we've seen and what we think about it and our opinions. Alpha is this space each week just to come and to ask some of the bigger questions of life. And if you, sound, if you think you sound interested in that and you'd like to join us, then don't worry, it's not too late to join. Um, go onto our website, stwderby.org, and click on the sign up page. And we'd love you to come along tomorrow evening and join in with the discussion. But it might be for you that a Monday evening doesn't particularly work, but you would still like to know more about Alpha or at some point join the course. Then if that's you, then just drop us an email and we can let you know a little bit more and um, when we're going to next be running one. So that's Alpha. And then secondly, love your neighbour. Over the past few months, we've talked at different times during our service about this national campaign, Love Your Neighbour, which at St Werberg's we're part of. And it was set up to support and help the most vulnerable in our society during this pandemic and some of the effects which are going to come afterwards. And we as a church, really excitingly, have set ourselves the challenge of raising £60,000. And so far we have raised about 24,000. So thank you so much to all those of you who've given to it. We really appreciate your generosity, but we've still got a little way to go. And so one of the ideas, or Phil's idea, was that he is going to walk in a couple of weeks time, he's gonna walk 60K for 60K. And would love you to get behind him and support him. I'm not sure how much training he's done or whether he's done any training for it. So I imagine on the day there's going to be a few moments where he's going to need a little encouragement to keep going. And knowing that people have got behind him and sponsored him is going to help. If you'd like to do that, then again, go onto our website, go onto the Love Your Neighbour page. Um, and I know he'd be really encouraged by any support which is offered. But as well as Alpha and Love Your Neighbour, and there are lots of different things going on still in the life of St Werberg's. And particularly if you're new to the church, then check out our website. There's lots of details about Werbs groups, things for youth, things going on for students, amongst other things. Go and have a look and see what we're doing as a church. 
Good morning, my name is Phil, I'm the Lead Minister at St Wilberg's. It's great to be with you this morning. We're going to start a new series today. So if you have a Bible or if you have a Bible app or something else, why don't we jump in to John's Gospel. John chapter 14. Just to paint a little bit of a picture at the start of John chapter 14, Jesus is himself painting a picture. He's giving us a, a view and an idea of what heaven might look like. He talks about going on to prepare a place for us in his father's home. It's this beautiful picture of what heaven and eternity is going to look like. But at the end of that, Jesus says, you know the way to the place I'm going, which is a kind of a bit of a cryptic end to his wordplay and, and Thomas one of his his followers one of his friends says Lord we, we don't even know what you're talking about so how do we know the way to where you're going and Jesus says this in John chapter 14 verse 6 he says I am the way and the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me it's a verse that we if you've been around church at any length of time, you will have heard many, many times before. I know as a, as a, as a minister, as a lead, church leader, I have preached this passage over and over. But if I'm honest, this summer I found a new understanding of it. We as a church thought about, um, uh, we were asked to read the book uh, by John Mark Homer, uh, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. And I have, I've was absolutely loved this book and it's inspired a lot of our new series that we're going to be tapping into because I've talked about the truth of Jesus, Jesus being true. He is who he said he is. We can rely and we can stand upon the truth of Jesus. I've talked about the life that we have in Jesus, that, uh, that Jesus came to give us eternal life and life in all its fullness. But the way of Jesus, that there's... Um, a way to live out our life, that actually the way of Jesus plus the truth of Jesus really does equal that life. Well, I've had a whole new revelation of that this summer. And so we're going to spend the next few weeks thinking about the way of Jesus and learning what the way of Jesus is so that we can put this into place in our lives. Let's pray together. Loving Father, I thank you for this opportunity this morning to, to meditate on these few verses. To think about what it means to follow the way of Jesus. Lord, we thank you that you have a way for us. And we pray now that by the power of the Spirit, you'll open our hearts and our minds to you. Speak to us, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Over the last few weeks, I've spoken to a number of different people as kind of we've opened up church again and we've been able to see people and I've been able to ask people kind of how has how has lockdown been for you? How have you um, coped and survived during this season? And the overriding answer is I'm tired. There's this sense that actually we've been in crisis mode for six months now. And we're still asking the question, how long is this going to go on? We're, we're trying to work out answers for ourselves, whether it's for our health or whether it's for our finance. We're, we're trying to work out what does our employment look like? Or if we run a company, how, how do we keep people employed? How do we keep people safe? There's constant decisions and choices to be made. And we're, we've run out of adrenaline. We're, we're tired. If we're a student, if we're a young person, we're, we're trying to plot through what life looks like and will I be able to get to university? What does this mean for me? Where, where does my future lie? And, and maybe we've had hopes and dreams dashed from before us. We're tired and we're asking the question, how long will this go on? Anna reminded me this week of uh, the Jeremiah, the, the Old Testament prophet who um, was speaking to the Israelites who had gone into exile and they'd been captured and taken away from their homeland and they're in Babylon and they're kind of slaves and they're angry and they're frustrated and they're asking the same question. They're saying, how long? 
And Jeremiah starts, comes back with this frustration at these false prophets who keep saying, it's OK, it's OK, it won't be long. We'll get back to Jerusalem soon and everything will be fine. And Jeremiah says, no, no, no. Jeremiah says, um, it's going to be 70 years. It's going to be 70 years in exile. Now, don't panic. I'm not saying we're going to be 70 years in COVID. I'm not an Old Testament prophet. I don't have the inside scoop on that. That's not what I'm saying. But what Jeremiah says is you've got to put down roots here and now. In the famous passage of Jeremiah 29, he says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Before he says that, he says, make homes, build gardens, get married, have kids, have grandkids. Be present in that place. We need to be present in the midst of this. No longer can we continue in this kind of crisis mode, but we need to be able to ask ourselves, what does it mean to live here now? To seek, in Jeremiah's words, the peace and the prosperity of the city. Because we're tired. And we're worn out. And we long for a new way to live our life here. In Matthew chapter 11, Jesus says these incredible words. He says, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus said, take my yoke and learn from me. Take and learn my way of living. The yoke agriculturally uh, is something that you used to put across a kind of like a metal bar across two cows when they're pulling and they're plowing so that they could share the burden, share the load together. But a yoke in Jesus context was what a rabbi would have. A rabbi was a teacher of uh, the Jewish faith and the rabbi was the best of the best of the best. He was like the, the, the lead guru person and he had interpreted all of the law, all of the scripture, had understood every verse and had poured over every single bit of it and then had come up with an interpretation. This is therefore how we live this out. And that was called the rabbi's yoke. It was how do we deal with marriage? How do we deal with kids? How do we deal with anger and frustration and disappointment and grief? That became the rabbi's yoke that someone tried to take on. And we know this through their educational system. Uh, when uh, young boys would have gone to school, uh, um, up until the age of 10, uh, they would have um, spent the whole of the first 10 years of their life or the first time in education, learning the Torah, the uh, the first five books of the Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. They would have spent their whole educational system memorising scripture. That's how they learnt, memorising scripture. So at around about the age of 10, they would have had what's called uh, Beit Sephira, Beit Sephira was where they were kind of tested on that. Did they really, had they done it? Had they been able to memorise those first five books of the Old Testament? And if they had done that, then they kind of graduated and went on to the next level. If they hadn't, then they were um, kind of shipped off to learn the family apprentice, or be an apprentice to the family trade, fisherman, carpenter, whatever it might have been. Then to the age of uh, kind of 14, 15, when you had Beit Talmud. And Beit Talmud is where you um, had learned not just from Genesis to Deuteronomy, but from Genesis to Malachi. The whole of the Jewish scriptures memorised. Every single piece by the age of 14, 15. That was their educational system. And again, you would be tested at this point. If you could re recite the verse and moment of that uh, that scripture then you you kind of graduated you went through Beit Talmud onto the next stage but if you didn't off you go back to the family um the trade and off you go to learn that but then you get to Beit Midrash and at kind of around about the age of 16 not only was it that you had learnt all of scripture at this point you decided whether you wanted to become a rabbi 
And so you had to go and apply to a rabbi to take on the rabbi's yoke. You had to say to them, I want to be your disciple. Will you have me? Now, we think of disciple sometimes in our culture as this kind of sense of it's someone who's learning. It's a student. And, and it is about knowledge, but it's more than that. It's about living out the interpretation of that person. It's saying, I, I want to do what you do, Rabbi. I want to be like you. And so the rabbi would ask questions of uh, the, this young student in front of him. With, did they know the scripture? Did they know or understand all of those things? But also had they understand the, understood the interpretation? Could this person do what I do? And again, at this point, if the answer was no, sorry, you're not quite good enough. You, you know some of the scripture. You, you're very good at in, um, kind of head knowledge, but you don't know how to live this out. You can't do what I do. Off you go. Back to the family dread. But if you got a yes, then the rabbi would say to this young person, come, follow me. Words that we've heard somewhere else before. Come, follow me. And that young person would give up everything. They would leave their families and their lives around them and they would devote themselves to learning to be like their rabbi, to take on every interpretation of the scriptures and the law because they wanted to be like them. It was a whole lifestyle decision. Now I've got to be honest with you. Uh, um, I have always struggled with my weight. It's kind of one of those things. And it's simply because I love food far too much. And so um, whilst I also enjoy a bit of exercise, I'm quite lazy, but I, my weight goes up and down and it fluctuates. And if you've been around church for a long time, you would have noticed that that's what happens. It just goes in and out um, depending on kind of moods I'm in. I would love to be fit and ripped and shredded and muscly and looking healthy and being good but I just love pies and pasties and crisps and chocolate far too much and so uh, we I took a decision at the beginning of uh, September to um, to do something that I've never done before which is I've signed up for the Joe Wicks 90 day plan now um, other plans are available. I'm not being sponsored by anyone to say to promote this, but I've enjoyed some of the Joe Wicks during um, lockdown stuff that he's done. And I thought I can do this because he not only does the exercise, but he gives us gives me um, the food and the, the, the meal sizes and the portions and everything that I should be eating. And I've, I'm a few days into it. The stupid chest infection kicked me out at the beginning of September, but I'm now getting into it. And as I keep listening to these videos that Joe Wicks does, I realise that it, it is a whole lifestyle that I need to adopt. It's not just that I can do one or two things or not have a few snacks. It's I need to really devote myself. If I want to get fit, I have to really go at this plan. And he was saying yesterday uh, when I was doing the exercise that if I do it for 90 days, he's hoping that this will be a lifetime thing, that this will now go on forever, that I'll, I'll have built pan, plans and patterns in my life that will mean I can fully live this out. But if I don't stick to it, I won't see the results that I want. Dallas Willard, who is quickly becoming a bit of a spiritual hero of mine, uh, uh, an author, a theologian, says this about the yoke of Jesus. He says this, in this truth lies the secret of the easy yoke. The secret involves living as Jesus lived in the entirety of of his life, adopting his overall lifestyle. We often think that becoming a Christian and living the Jesus way is that we just do one or two things. Maybe we go to church, maybe we give a bit of money, maybe we say a prayer or walk the extra mile when someone needs something. But actually, Jesus is inviting us to a full devoted life to him. We need to be fully in. We need to apprentice. And we live in a city where we know, we understand what the word apprentice means. We've seen uh, engineering apprentices all over the place. You come and you learn from the master. You come and take on and do what they do. Because, of course, Jesus, when he walked along the Sea of Galilee that first time as we meet him, 
he says to James and to Peter, come, follow me. Two fishermen, two guys who were clearly not the best of the best of the best. Two people who at some point had gone off to learn the family trade. Two people who, as we understand further on in scripture, and this says, these guys are normal, uneducated people. But yet Jesus says, come, follow me. And then he says to them at the end of Matthew's gospel, he says, now go and make disciples. He calls us to fully devoted life, to live out the way of Jesus. And and in scripture, we understand that the early Christians weren't called Christians. The early disciples, they weren't called Christians. They were called followers of the way. They lived out the way of Jesus. And we are being invited to do that too, to fully devote ourselves to live out the way that Jesus lived. Last week, we talked a little bit from Ephesians chapter two. and I read that verse where it says, uh, you've let the world, which doesn't know the first thing about living, tell you how to live. And we have, we've all been formed and shaped and moulded by the world around us. And I have to say, it is not working. It hasn't worked. Whereas Jesus is saying, come and live my way. Be fully devoted. Give yourself to me. You don't have to be the best of the best of the best. This is grace. This is me inviting you, not you having to apply for the role. But it is a way to truth and to life that you've never received. You may never have received before. In Eugene Peterson's translation of this verse, these few verses in Matthew 11, he says this, are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to make, take a real rest. Walk with me, work with me, and watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. It all starts with a decision. It all starts with us accepting the invitation from Jesus to come to him, to give our lives fully to him, to surrender ourselves and to say the world, the way in which the world has taught us to live does not work. But Jesus' way is the way to life. And so I invite you now to make that decision. Over the next few weeks, we're going to look at what that really looks like and we're going to expand it and explore it a bit more. But at this point, hear the invitation from Jesus and make a decision in your heart to respond. Let's pray. Loving Father, we thank you that you invite us to come to you, especially those who are tired and worn out. And Lord, if we're honest, at this point in time, that's all of us. You are the way. You have a way of living, a way that you model to us. And Lord, we, we long to learn that, to pick it up, to learn the unforced rhythms of grace so that our lives may be free and light, that we might find rest in you, that we may know life in all its fullness. And so we choose now to give, to give up, to surrender and to say, Lord, we come to you. There is nowhere else to go. You alone have the words of eternal life. And so we we come to you. Holy Spirit, we ask that you help us to step into all that God has for us. Guide us and lead us, we ask, in the way of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Great. Thanks so much, Phil.
So we're nearly the end of our service, but just a quick reminder that if you want to get behind Phil on his um, 60k walk or to support the Love Your Neighbour campaign, then do head over to our website. And again, if you're interested in Alpha in any way, if you want to sign up and join us tomorrow night, or if you're kind of interested in doing it in the future, then do drop us an email, let us know about it or sign up via the website. But I hope you have a great week and that we'll see you next Sunday, either back here online or perhaps down in church um, in person. But let me just pray for us all as we finish. Father God, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for your presence with us this morning. And I want to thank you that that presence goes with us as we go out into this new week. And Lord, I want to thank you for your love. I want to thank you for the way that you have blessed us. And I pray, will you help us to take that love, that blessing to those around us? In Jesus' name, amen.